2022 is almost over and I can't let the year end without giving you a home theater tour for 2022, as well as letting you know some things I would do different and some future plans I have for 2023. All right, well, why don't we start right outside the theater with this marquee sign. So this is one of my favorite features of my theater. And this is a monitor. So technically this is new, but not new. This monitor I was using for a couple years in my office. And then I just switched it out with the really, really old monitor that I had or TV that I was using before. So this is actually TV and I'm using movie poster to display the movie posters. And I also have movie poster connected to my Plex. So what's really cool is I have movie poster connected to my Plex and whenever I'm playing anything in the theater using Plex, depending on which device that I'm using, I have it configured, it will display the movie poster and all the info for the movie that I'm watching. And I really love it. It really gives the theater that, that movie experience. You know, when you go to a movie theater and you walk outside or you go up to the theater that the movie's playing on, they all have these marquee signs with the movie that's playing. So it has the now playing, it has the rating, it has you know the type of audio that it is, aspect ratio, and ultra HD 4K, the, the movie resolution. So I'll show you how that works here in a minute with Plex, I'll start a movie and then I can show you, but this is really cool. I really, really like this and my friends really like it. You know, when I first showed them, they were like, oh man, that's really cool, how are you doing that? So normally you would have a computer plugged up to your monitor or your TV, but my computer is in a completely separate room. So I thought, well, how am I going to get movie poster without having to go and buy, you know, an HDMI window stick or a NUC or something. And then I thought, wait, I have a Chromecast that's just lying around that was never open. So what I'm doing is I have a Chromecast behind here, behind the TV that's plugged in. And then on my computer, I have movie poster running and then I'm just casting my desktop. I have the movie poster actually full screen on my monitor, and then I'm just using Chromecast to cast my desktop to this TV. And it works really well. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think this is a really cool feature. I've seen some other people on, on YouTube, on Home Theater Reviews that have done something like this, and I think that they're using movie poster. But even if you don't have Plex, you can still use movie poster to display whatever posters that you want. And I'm actually gonna be, so I have a video on my channel on how to do this, and I'm actually gonna be doing another video that shows you how you can make your own customizable poster, so it's really cool. So let me go ahead and start a movie in the theater and then show you how Plex integrates with Movie Poster. Okay, so I have my remote and I've got the movie queued up, so I want you to see how it changes. So right now this is just a you know generic poster of Top Gun Mavic that I have it playing, but once I hit okay, the movie in my theater will start playing and then you'll see the picture image on here and all the information is gonna change to reflect the movie that I'm watching. So I'm gonna hit mute because the audio is gonna come through. So there it goes. So I'm playing Ready Player One in the theater. So really, really cool. Now, if you'll notice at the very top, you've got your start time, which it's 11.35 right now. It's showing 11.21 because I started it earlier but it'll show the start time when you start the movie. Like if I was to start the movie from the very beginning, then it would show that time. And then you've got now playing, which you can configure this to say different things. You can configure it to say like now playing or coming soon. Obviously it's playing now, so you want it to say now playing. And then it shows the end time, which is really cool. So anytime you pause this or stop it or restart it, it's gonna update that start and end time. And then you see I've got the movie poster and I can change those movie posters based on Plex, like whatever movie poster that I'm using for Plex at the current moment, that's what it's gonna display on the movie poster with Plex. And then at the bottom, you've got your, your movie rating, and then you've got the, I guess that's the studio or the production company, and then you've got your tagline, A Better Reality Awaits. You've got the Dolby True HD, which is actually Dolby Atmos, and I can change that. Uh, that's just pulling what it's pulling from from Plex and then it has the aspect ratio and then the resolution and then how many stars it is in Plex. So 
it's really, really cool. I'm, I'm, I love this feature of my theater. I think, like I said, it just gives it a really, really authentic feel. And when people come over, they can say, oh man, that, you know, that's, that's really cool. Cause I mean, how many people <laughs> have something like this in their home, in their theater? And it just makes it feel more like a theater. All right, so we're inside the theater now and I'm in the back of the theater. So I'm in the back left corner of my theater and I've got a lot of stuff going on right here. So let's start with the acoustic panels. So these are some acoustic panels that I have all around the room. I have a mixture of acoustic panels and bass traps from Acoustamac. Very good company, very affordable. I've had these probably for, man, five, six, seven years, maybe more. I don't remember, but these are 24 by 24 acoustic panels. I believe they're one inch thick. And then over here, I have a bass trap that's 24 by 24, but they are two inches thick, I believe. So these have served me well. I really like them. I do want to get some diffusion diffusers. So I'll have a mixture of acoustic panels and diffusers just to, you know, balance the room out more and it's not just acoustic panels, but they work really well. I'm really happy with them. I'd even buy some more. Go check them out. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check those out. Then over here, um, one of my videos, I think it's like 10 tips on how to make your home theater feel authentic or something like that. I talked about personalizing, personalizing your theater. I know some people just want their theater just to feel like a theater, but I'm a huge, 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 huge baseball fan and a huge Astros fan. Go Astros, we just won the World Series. Probably gonna get some hate in the comments. But here I have some bobbleheads. And then over here I have some action figures that come with, so Warner Brothers, whenever they release their animated movies, their superhero movies, they usually come with an action figure. So I like to collect those. I have a bunch of those I've collected over the years. And then under that I have a Metropolis Superman movie poster or more like just a poster that some really good friends of mine gave me because I know that I'm a huge huge Superman fan. Superman is my number one superhero from the comics. Love Superman. And then over here is one of my two back surround speakers and these are my Polk RTIs. These are one of the first speakers that I bought that was I guess better than the I think the first speakers that I ever bought were the Polk monitor, some towers, some very cheap towers. But these are real wood. And these are the successor or the predecessor to, I think the RTI A series. So I got these at Fry's Electronics for like, I wanna say like a hundred bucks a piece. So that was like my first, you know, legit speaker that I bought and I've had them ever since. They still serve me well. They are very bright. So I'm currently in the transition of upgrading all my speakers to Arundel, which is gonna take a while because I have a budget, I'm not rich, but I just recently moved these to the back because they were my left and rights. And right now I'm using the Arundel 1961s as my left and right, which I'll talk about later. And then over here I have my trusty Logitech Harmony Elite remote, love this thing. I actually got this free when Harmony used to have like, uh, they used to do like beta testing and you had to sign up really fast for that stuff, but I actually got this free to beta test it. So I've been using it ever since. Love this thing. I will probably never get rid of it. Very sad that Harmony is no longer making them. I do have a Sofa Baton X1 that I will talk about later as well. But that's over here. And then on this wall, so if you watch my first home theater tour, which hopefully this one's better because that was when I first started it, YouTube, my YouTube channel. That was like one of the first videos that I made. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Haterade Cowboy here. So today I wanted to give you a tour of my home theater. But this wall used to end right here. So this was all open and I wanted to be able to control the sound and the acoustic properties better. So I had a friend come over and he enclosed this, but the wall is not completely even with the existing wall. So I ran into an issue because I have the same wall paneling, the weathered wood wall paneling that I have outside. So I'm using this as an accent wall. And I had to stop because when I got to the new part of the wall, 
it's not even and so I couldn't get the staples into the two by fours that were behind here but I did find a solution I just got some wedges and wedged them in there and you know it protrudes a little bit further out than it should but not a big deal so I just need to get some more and finish that and this green tape is to let me know where the stud is in the wall so that you know I can staple or nail the wood into the stud so and then down here in the corner I have two subs right now so I have the Emotiva XS8 and XS12 that I'm reviewing. I'm currently making a video for that right now, so look out for that video hopefully in the next couple weeks, maybe the next week or so. But this is the XS12, and then right next to that, I have the SVS SB4000. I believe it's SB or PB. I think it's SB4000. I absolutely love this subwoofer. I don't want to get rid of it. I'm probably going to buy it. Hopefully, I can buy it because I don't want to give it back. But it is a review unit, so if I don't buy it, I have to send it back. But I absolutely love this thing. I'm also gonna be doing a review for this sometime soon, but this thing is just, I've never experienced a sub like this before. I've never felt a sub like this before. It's just absolutely changed my home theater as far as dynamics. And I mean, it's, it's probably almost too powerful for my home theater, but Hey, you always want more power, right? So yeah, that's the Emotiva XS8 and then the SVS PB4000. And I believe that's it for this corner. I've got my little Astros uh, flag there. So let's go over to the other corner and take a look at the rack. All right, so this is the other half of the back of the room. And not a whole lot has changed. There are some changes, but it's basically the same, but I'll go over the changes. So this is new. Well, it's not physically new. I've had this for a while. I had this at my parents' house, but this is a salamander rack and it's modular, which means you can keep adding to it. You can add shells. You can add these uh, rails, I guess you could say, to make it taller. So you can basically make this thing as tall as you want. So this is going to be my testing rig for when I get products from you know, companies and stuff, you know, like receivers or Blu-ray players or something when I don't have room in here or I just don't want to, you know, pull, put stuff in, rack it, pull it out. It'll be a lot more accessible over here. And then when I'm ready to ship it back, I can just take it off. But right now I have an Integra Blu-ray player on here. I don't even use this thing, at least not for my home theater. I basically only use this when I need to record like, you know, images or video or something from a blu-ray player i can use this this was given to me this was going to be basically thrown away a friend gave this to me so i use this when i need to use like my capture card to capture video in my in my videos and then i have a marantz receiver that was also given to me by the same friend it doesn't work it turns on but it turns right off after a couple seconds so i need to take that in get that fixed probably going to be a couple hundred bucks but it's not important right now i'll probably end up using that somewhere else in the house maybe you know bedroom or in the living room and then i've got some controllers and stuff some remote some 3d glasses and then down there i just have some some movie cases that i need to get rid of i think that i need to catalog some of those movies so that's new and then behind that is a acoustic panel that i diy'd did it myself my dad helped me a little bit with the uh, cutting of the wood before I had some, you know, tools. But I made that myself. So that is a 48 by 24. And I believe it's like um, two inches thick. Roxel Safe and Sound that I used for that. And then over here is my Middle Atlantic rack. So I had this in the last home theater tour. But what's different is I finally got these panels now. So before it was open and, you know, I always hated the way that it looked because you could see all the wires and everything in there. And, you know, it was kind of loud if I had like a, a device or something that had a hard drive, you could hear it. But I have these panels now and they're actually really simple to, to take off. So I got this probably about a month and a half ago. So these panels usually, they cost, I want to say almost a thousand dollars, but 
I found them on eBay brand new. I paid, I think, 160 something bucks shipped. So they come in four pieces and it's really easy. You just take that off. And then, you know, I can access the back of this and then this bottom part comes off. Same thing for the other side. So really cool. I'm, I'm really glad that I finally got these because it just makes it look a lot nicer and you know you don't see all the wires and stuff and you know it helps with like you know infrared and stuff so that the signal's not just bouncing out it has something to bounce onto so I'm gonna put this back on so those are the panels for the middle Atlantic rack again I got this rack off of offer up someone was selling this I paid less than 200 bucks for it. I absolutely love it. This thing is a beast. It's a tank. And, you know, you can buy stuff used sometimes. I didn't want to spend another, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars for a smaller rack. I believe this is a 44U rack. And I still have plenty of space in here, as you'll see. I had to replace the the key on here because it was damaged. But I open it up, and then when you open it, I've got this motion sensor light in here. I think it's dead. Yeah, the lights, I need to recharge it, but there's a light here that I can take off. It's magnetic. So this is a really cheap and simple way to light your rack. If you need to, you know, work in here and I can move it around, I can, you know, put it on the side. It's magnetic, I can basically put it anywhere I want to. So let me show you all the components that I have in my rack for 2022. So down at the bottom, our first component is gonna be the Emotiva XPA three gen two so this is what this is the amplifier that i'm using to power my lcr i've had that thing for probably about 10 years or so almost 10 years and it's still alive and kicking i've only had to send it in once because all it was was i think a fuse blue or something like that but i'm using that it's 200 watts per channel rms absolutely love that thing love emotiva products and you know, they give you a lot bang for your buck. So that's what I'm using for my LCR for processing audio and video. I have the Anthem MRX 720, nothing's changed there. Still love that. I would like to upgrade it at some point, obviously in game for a lot of people is gonna be a trend off. Hopefully at some point, maybe with this channel, I can reach that milestone. But for now this works great. And I'm, I'm running a 7.2.4 configuration with some external amplification as you'll see which speaking of above that i have the emotiva upa 700 so that's a seven channel amp and i believe that's either 80 or 85 watts per channel i've also had that for a very very long time has not failed me they don't make this one anymore you can't buy it but rock solid and then above that i have the oppo udp 203 still have mine probably never going to sell it even though they're selling for like 14, 1500 bucks, which is absurd. If you can still find one, these things are absolutely great. They're still considered one of the best, if not the best Blu-ray player on the market and they're not even manufacturing them anymore. So that tells you how good these things are. So yeah, I, I really don't use this very much anymore. I've been using it here lately because I've been doing some, you know, capturing some audio and video. And then, you know, for 3D, I have watched a couple of 3D movies, but I really don't use it that much anymore. But when I do use it, I remember why I love it so much because it's just still such a well-built player, even though, you know, it's been what, two, three years since they stopped manufacturing them. But then above that, I have the PS4, which I probably haven't even turned on in like six months. And then I have the Xbox Series X. I have a 16 ethernet switch. 16 port ethernet switch. And then on top of that, I have the Philips Hue bridge version two, excuse me. And then above that, I have a Basex, Emotiva Basex A100. I believe these are 50 watts per channel times two. So I think I'm using this for my back surround speakers. And then I have the Harmony hub, which I'm using with my Harmony Elite. As you know, I love that remote, and then I have an NVIDIA Shield 2017 in the back, I still use that with Plex, and I haven't been using it, I pretty much almost haven't used it since I've gotten the Zidu, which we'll 
you know, you'll see. And then I have a Panamax MR4000 for all of my outlets, which I'm probably going to need to get something that has more outlets here soon because I'm running out of space to plug in stuff. Sometimes I have to unplug stuff if I'm testing equipment. So I'd like to get something, you know, that has more ports and something that I can rack mount that has rack ears. And then above that, I have the Sofa Baton X1 remote. Oh, look, the light decided to come on. <laughs> I have the Sofa Baton X1 hub with the remote. I'm not currently using it because I couldn't get it to work with my projector and the infrared blasters because I have a hush box. But this is still very good. I, I plan on moving this into like another room. I've just been lazy, haven't done it yet. And then I have an Apple TV 4K first gen, and then the Zidu Z9X here at top, which I am enjoying that Z9X so, so, so much. I bought it, it is mine, I bought it with my own money, but didn't really know what to expect, and I absolutely love that thing. Every time I use it, I find new things, even if they're little things but I'm loving it more and more. There's still things I'd like to see improved on it. You know, I'd like to see some other stuff, which I'll probably talk about in the review because I have to do a review for that at some point. But yeah, those are all the components in the, in the rack. And you know, I've got some infrared blasters all throughout, but yeah, and I still have plenty of space to put other stuff in here if I want to permanently or for testing, you know, equipment. But that's the rack. Again, this is a 44U Metal Atlantic used. Don't be afraid to buy used gear, guys. I know, obviously, you know, you want to check it out and make sure it's good. But for stuff like this, I mean, this thing is absolutely solid. I had to get a friend with his truck to help me pick it up. And then we had to, you know, carry it in. And it's, it's heavy without anything in it. So I really love this, this rack. I'm really glad that I have it and it only cost me a couple hundred bucks and it's got a door on it. You know, I, it's got a, you know, I guess this is plexiglass and it's tinted. So that's the rack. Let me take you around the rest of the room and show you what else is going on. Hey everybody. I wanted to take a quick moment to say, welcome to my theater and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan, AKA Haterate Cowboy, and I really appreciate you clicking on this video and supporting the channel. But the channel still needs your help. So if you enjoy the content that I produce here, why don't you do me a solid by hitting the subscribe button and hit the like button if you find value in this video. And don't forget to share it with your friends. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, so going around the room, we got more action figures. Got a lot of floating shelves. Really like those, got them off of Amazon. And then there's some, there's a Superman poster that my brother and family got me. Really cool poster. Some baseball memorabilia. Mark McGuire, former home run, home run king. Got some more acoustic panels on the wall. So you'll see some bass traps there. There's a bass trap there and there's another acoustic panel. And then on that side of the wall, there's some more acoustic panels. The big one in the middle is the one that I did myself, I DIY'd. More baseball memorabilia. I'm telling you guys, I am a huge baseball fan. So, lots of stuff on the walls, personalized. I really gotta fix that wall over there, it just really bothers me. I hate it to see it in videos and stuff, but. There is the hush box that I'm currently working on, and I have a video on that. There's gonna be a probably a couple videos in that video series. So there's the hush box that I just replaced with the other Jackie one. There's my Epson 5040 UB projector that has served me well since 2017. Looking to upgrade that in 2023. And then up front, we've got the Polk T15 speakers up in the corners. That's my Atmos, front Atmos. There's one there and there's another one right there and then I've got the screen and then we've got the Arendal 1723 Center S THX speaker and then in the corners you, it's going to be kind of hard to see because it's so dark up here but I've got the 1961 towers right there 
there's one and then I have another one in the other corner which probably won't be able to see because it's so dark but there is the other one so I'm testing those right now really like them a lot those are very very neutral speakers and then there I have my Anthem Arc Genesis microphone and I set up or run calibration so that's the front of the room and then on the ceiling I've got these I have another video with that too I've got these acoustic foam panels that I installed on the ceiling and you know they they help some you know they don't make a huge difference but they do help and they look cool so at least there's a little bit of help on the ceiling as far as reflections I would like to do something different, you know, go with, you know, GIK or something with some diffusers, diffusion panels and stuff, have a good mixture. And then of course there is the, the screen, the 100 inch silver ticket screen. So I guess we'll move on to seating. All right, let's talk about seating. So my theater can hold six people. I have a front row consisting of three, and then I have this row that I'm sitting in here that also consisting of three. Now, my seating is not ideal because I have three different types of seating. So on the front row, I have a couch that I've had for a couple years that I bought from the dump. And no, I don't have to go to the restroom. That's actually the name of the furniture place. You might have heard of it. I know they have some in different cities, but I got that couch from the dump. Uh, hopefully at some point I can get some more Valencia theater seats and then here I have a pulling chair from Ikea that's really comfortable my buddy loves sitting in this chair and it has a, a footrest and then the crown jewel of seats is my Valencia theater seats so most of you watching this probably already know about Valencia if you don't they make some really 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 high-end well-built seats now they're not cheap they do come at a premium but they do have different tiers they have some affordable prices these seats are basically like the bottom the cheapest seats that you can get cheap as far as price not quality all of all of valencia seats are made of high quality these are the syracuse model and they're super super comfortable even though they're at the bottom tier of their their seats i love these seats i'm sitting in the main listening position this is where i always sit no matter what i typically never sit over here unless maybe i'm trying to do some type of like a b testing or something but i never sit over here this is the main listening position so this has some features uh, some of the other chairs that are more expensive are obviously going to have more features but i'll go through the features on this one so you have your accessory port here where you can use a bunch of different accessories. They have wine glass holders, they have popcorn holders. I have the tablet holder, so I can get my phone and I can have my phone here or my tablet. It does work with an iPad, obviously depending on which size iPad you have. But normally, like if I'm doing some testing with my HD Fury 4K Diva, I'll have my iPad here and then I can log in remotely and it's pretty cool. So this swivels, turns around, you can turn it sideways, you can angle it. So really cool accessory. And then over here, I have two of these. So this is your table tray. And then, you know, I use this all the time when I'm watching TV, watching movies and I'm eating. I use this and then I usually have my cup holder here. Speaking of cup holders, you have removable cup holders if you want to clean them. These are plastic. I think some of the newer models might be using metal, and you can get these in different colors. I went with black because, you know, I didn't want anything that was going to be reflecting of light. But you have that there. And then on the inside, you have some controls. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the cup holders light up. So you have a button that lights up all the cup holders. I can turn that on, turn that off. And then inside there is a USB port for charging. I charge my phone all the time using that. 
and then you have your buttons to recline and I'll show you how far it goes back so that's how far it goes back now I have my hat on now if you notice when I'm if I lie all the way back my head is going to be looking directly at the ceiling so the only thing that I wish these seats have which is obviously you know it's a bottom tier seat so they're not going to have all of the features that most of the other expensive ones have but some of the other expensive ones have the headrest that will move back and forth so you can move the headrest forward that way when you're lying down you can you know have your head tilted at the screen you don't have to strain your neck i usually just have a pillow that i put behind me and that works fine with these chairs but yeah those are the controls and very very comfortable i don't remember the type of grade that this leather is but it's very very soft very comfortable i have some friends that come over regularly that watch movies uh, there's a couple couples married couples and one couple always runs in here before everyone else to try to get in these seats because they know that these are <laughs> these are the money seats and they're very comfortable but i do have plans to upgrade these or the rest of the seats obviously that's going to take time that's going to take money i have to save up i have other responsibilities that i have to assign priority to so seating situation is not ideal but eventually you know i will upgrade the seats so let me show you what the front row looks like so this is the front row so again i got this couch from the dump it's nothing special it's not expensive i don't remember how much i paid for it but it was something that i needed to get really quick because i was having some people over and i needed to make sure that i had enough room to to sit people and in hindsight i probably should have just waited and used that money saved it to buy something else the seats that i wanted the valencia theater seats but you know we all have to start somewhere we all have to get started with other things but so i don't hate this couch i don't love it however i don't like it at all for home theater because it's just not what i want now for the time being it suffices and it does allow me to have six people over you know, or does allow me to have six people in the theater when I have friends over. I typically never sit on the front row and there's a couple reasons. First reason is because when friends come over, I usually let them sit in the good seats and the good row. The good seats being the two Valencia seats that I have and then the good row, which is, you know, the second row. The second reason why I don't sit up on the front row is because the front row is so close to the screen so right now i believe there's about six feet from my head to the screen that's really close you know it might not be an issue for most people or some people but to me it's it's too close now there is and you can't see it because i have black velvet on the wall but there is a closet behind my screen and behind that closet there's about two feet my plan for 2023 is hopefully is to blow out that wall and push everything back two feet and then you know have to do some remodeling and make it look nice and I have to extend the wires because the wires are running down in the wall for my speakers and at that point then I would sit on the front row once I get you know better seating but until then the sweet spot is right behind me in the middle so let me know in the comments because I know some of you guys are pro like home theater seats like Valencia and other seats, uh, uh, other seat companies. And then some of you are like, no, I don't want anything blocking my head, my ears. You know, they're all about the couch. So why don't you let me know in the comments which one you are, if you're pro, you know, home theater seats or your pro couch. But this is the front row, nothing special. So I'm going to show you the rest of the room, the speakers and the screen. So this is the front of the room. I guess you can call this the most important part of the room because this is where all the video and audio happens. So this is the front of my room. Now I've, I've done some things different than the last home theater tour. So I moved this, the screen up 
And this is a 100 inch screen from Silver Ticket. I know some of you probably are gonna boo boo on Silver Ticket, but they make really good stuff for, at a really good price. And I got this really cheap, a uh, coworker of mine had one, actually had this exact screen, but he hadn't opened it yet. He had just moved into his house and his wife was like, hey, don't you wanna get a bigger screen? So he was like, hey man, you know, he found out that I was actually gonna buy the same screen. So he had it unopened, he sold it to me at a discount, so I bought it. Now, at some point in the future, yes, I would like to upgrade the screen to something better, more premium, maybe like a Seymour screen or something like that. But for now, it's perfectly fine. It, I have no issues with it, and I'm gonna continue to use it probably for a, a long while. But this is a 100 inch screen. And then behind the screen, some of the things I've done different is I have black velvet on the wall now. Now this stuff is, is, is pretty cheap. I bought it on Amazon and I believe it comes in like a four by 10 or five by 10 or something like that. So one piece, it's pretty big. I have a couple pieces of them, but I put that on the wall. Now the wall is painted black. However, behind the screen, there is a, there's two doors because there's a closet back there. I would show it to you, but I'm not going to take down all my velvet just to do that but you can go look at my older videos and see that. But I even painted the door, but it was still super distracting and just looked really, really bad. So what I did was I took some black velvet and I got this idea from some videos that I saw on Youth Man's reviews, Home Theater reviews. I saw some people had done this. It doesn't look exactly pretty because it needs to be cut at the bottom, but black velvet, this thing, the black velvet helps so much and you can tell what's black on screen and what's not. If your projector has good blacks, doesn't have good blacks, you'll know. But that's something different that I've, that I've done, that I added. And if I'm ever able to move this wall back, then what I'm gonna do is I'm either gonna make some panels with the black velvet, or I'm just gonna cut it to size and make it look a lot nicer. Cause right now I'm just using like these black wall tacks to keep it on the wall. But yeah, with the black walls, the black ceiling, and this black velvet, it's a black hole up here. Like it's extremely, extremely difficult to record in this room because it just sucks up all of the light. So I have to have a lot of light and then I have to make sure my camera, you know, is not blown out by, by the light. But anyways, that's the wall. That's something that I've done different. Another thing that I've done different is I have, and I have a video on this, I have installed or wall mounted my Atmos speakers. So I had some Polk T15 speakers that I've had for probably 10 years or so. I had a lot of Polk speakers for 10 years, but I had those lying around and I thought, you know what? I've never heard Atmos on the wall. I have them in ceiling and they sound great, but I had heard some, some rumbling, seen some videos about on wall being better than in ceiling. So I figured, you know what? Let me go run up in the attic but run some wires, it's not gonna to be too difficult. Ran some wires down behind the closet, and then I got these mounts on Amazon that hold, I think, like 25 or 30, 30 pound speakers. And I just mounted them, and I'm never going back to in ceiling speakers. I will probably still use my in ceiling speakers if I get, you know, a receiver or a processor that has 15 or more channels. But if I had to do it all over again, I would go with on wall. At most speakers. Now I know everybody, there's probably a big debate about that and some people may not have the room for it or you know if they're married that may not fit the wife acceptance factor but that's how I like it now. So I have those two up in the front that's different and then speakers. So my LCR is new, completely new from the last video that I made and if you watch the channel then you know I have decided to go with Arendal speakers and I am 150% happy with my choice. So this is the Arundel 1723 Center S THX speaker, center channel. And it's a beautiful speaker, I love it. Before I had some Polk speakers, I still have them. I moved the Polk out into the living room. But the big difference that you immediately notice with Arundel and my pokes is that the pokes are very bright and they're very fatiguing at higher volumes. You have to turn the volume back down. The Arundel speakers are not like that. Very neutral, 
I can turn them up and there's no fatiguing, there's no distortion, nothing. Now the issue that I had was I was only using one Arundel speaker and then two Polk speakers. That's not the case anymore. I have the 1961 Towers and for my left and right that I'm that they sent to me for review. So technically they're not mine. I do have the option to buy them once I finish reviewing them, which I probably will because I've never had a timber matched LCR before. And now I do. Now the only thing is the speakers are a little bit smaller than the 1723 line, but there's a reason for that because you know they're trying to target maybe people who can't spin as much. And I don't remember how much those are, but you can look them up online on rndall.com. But that's my LCR. So the 1723 Center S, the 1961 Towers. And then up in the front, I have the sub that I bought a couple years ago. This is their, I think it's PC 2000. I forget the model number, but it's their cylinder sub, you know, cylinder because it's tall and it doesn't take up a lot of floor space. So I have this one up front. I was gonna sell it, but I was like, you know what? The room's big, even though I have that PB4000 in the, the back, it's, I, I still need to have you know even base throughout the room. So even with that sub, even sitting up front, you don't get as much base. So I decided you know, I'll just keep it, move it up front, even though it, you know, it's not near the same class as that 13 and a half inch sub. So that's up here in the front. And then I've got, you know, some more acoustic panels and stuff, which you've already seen. I have a window here, so I have it open right now so that I can get some more light in filming. But up top, I put these foam acoustic panels on here. I got these from Amazon as well, and I have a video on that. And looks pretty cool. I like the design. They, they don't make that much of a difference. I ran Arc Genesis before and after. I installed these and there is some improvement. It's not massive, but there is some improvement. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to, to reduce the reflections on the ceiling because it was just this one big flat surface and that's that's a no-no for home theater. So what I'd like to do, I'll probably just keep this, but what I'd like to do is I like to accompany that with some maybe some GIK acoustic panels, you know, with some diffusers or something like that on the second half of the ceiling. So yeah, and I still have my in-ceiling speakers. But that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much the, the tour of the home theater. So still a work in progress. Still have a lot of things that I want to do, a lot of things that I need to do, things that may take a while. Next year, 2023, I'm expecting that to be a big year. I'm hoping that I can upgrade my projector to the Epson LS12000B. I'm hoping that I can blow up this wall knock out that closet and push everything back. That'll give me an additional two feet and, you know, upgrade some of the chairs and stuff and do some other things cosmetically. So a lot of stuff that I want to do, a lot of time, and of course, you know, funds. So I think that's going to conclude it for the home theater tour of 2022. Let me, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have any ideas that you think I should do or what you think of the room. If there's anything that you would do differently or anything that you would do the same or anything that you like, be sure to let me know in the comments. And then I guess, yeah, I guess I'll, we'll discuss, you know, some future plans and if there's anything that I would do different. So that's the home theater tour. Now, as you saw, my home theater is not perfect. And I'm sure that that is the case for many of you guys out there, many of you watching this. So don't get discouraged if you're like me. <laughs> You have, we work a full-time job, you have bills, you have mortgage. You can't do everything all at once. It may take weeks, months, even years, maybe even decades to get the things that you want. But as long as you don't lose sight of that, you can save up, you can buy used gear, and then you can trade in or you can sell. I've sold a bunch of stuff to make some money to get some of the things that I wanted. So it's a journey. And I know a lot of you are, are also on the same similar journey. There's things that I really need to do in 2023, there's some small things that I can take care of. And then there's some other things that hopefully I can do in 2023 that we're going to talk about. But that's the home theater tour. Hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas, any thoughts, 
even if you saw something that you absolutely didn't like, you hated, let me know. I want to know. You know, I'm always open to, to tips and, you know, ways that I can improve my theater. So let's talk about future updates. So as you know, one of the biggest things that I'm currently updating is my speakers. So currently right now, my LCR consists of r and speakers. Now my center channel is mine. I bought that. That is the 1723 Center STHX speaker from Arndahl. Absolutely love it. I just got the 1961 Towers. So those I got in for review, but I'm probably going to buy those because, you know, that's my goal is to, to upgrade all my speakers to Arndahl. Now, they're a little bit smaller than the 1723S. And the S stands for small. So you have your 1723, then you have your 1723S, and then you have your 1961s. So I'm going to use those as my left and rights for a while until I purchase the 1723S tower speakers. And then I'll probably move those to the back. And then the next thing would probably be working on my Atmos speakers, at least the front, because I want to take care of the front. So the front's good right now. I still have my pokes up at the top that I've mounted, wall mounted. So that's fine for now. Eventually, I want to upgrade those and all my speakers to Arndahl. Now, I'll have to figure out what to do with the in walls. I'll probably may keep those. I mean, I'm going to probably leave them in there. But I would like to get some on wall Arndahls because I don't have room for, you know, full size tower speakers as my left and right surrounds. And then at some point, I would like to upgrade my receiver. Now, I'm absolutely happy with my receiver, Anthem MRX720. Love it. Love Arc Genesis. If I had to keep that for the rest of my life, I would be absolutely fine with it. Doesn't bother me. But as you know, in this home theater hobby, <laughs> we're never satisfied. So my end game goal is to get the Trinov. Uh, Trinov Altitude 16. That's my end goal. If I can't get that, then I would like to do maybe a JBL SD, I think it's the SDP 55. But I would like to upgrade to something that has more channels because I have speakers. I have enough speakers for it. Earlier in the year, I went and did some more wiring to add additional speakers for basically for testing. If I get equipment in that has more than, you know, 11 channels, I'll be able to test it. Currently, right now, I'm just using a 7.2.4 configuration. So that's that's fine, but I would like to upgrade the receiver now. That's not necessarily going to be 2023 because I have some other things that I want to upgrade first in 2023. So that's that's kind of like at the bottom of the totem pole. I don't need to upgrade that, and I'm absolutely fine, absolutely happy, content with my Anthem MRX 720. Something else that I want to upgrade for 2023, hopefully at some point, is the front row of seating. So as you saw in the theater tour, this is just a cheap couch that I bought from the dump and it's okay. I, it was kind of like an impulse buy when I had first moved here. I needed some more seating in here. I didn't even have my home theater up and running. I think I just had my screen and the projector and the speakers, but I had some friends come over and I needed something and I just went and bought it really quickly. So probably should have just waited and saved that money and used it for, towards something else. But, you know, you live and you learn. But I mean, it's OK. I don't I don't hate it. It's just I don't like it at all for home theater purpose, but it's serving a purpose right now. It does allow me to have three additional seats, six seats. So but eventually I want to upgrade to the Valencia Oslo's those. I love the way those seats look. They're absolutely beautiful. And I still need to get rid of that Poang chair in here and just get the third the third Syracuse Valencia theater seats that's probably going to be the first chair that you know I'll be able to to upgrade hopefully so those are the seats lighting I'd like to put some some can lights up front maybe like three can lights because it's with the black walls and the black velvet, it is a black hole up front. Like it's very, very difficult to try and film in here 
because there's just, even if I have enough light, the, the black walls and the black velvet just sucks in. It's like a black hole. So it just makes it really difficult when I'm trying to record. Sometimes I have to open the window to get more light. And then if I'm not using the correct lens, if it doesn't have, you know, the right focal length, then, or aperture, you know, if it doesn't have a good aperture, then it's really hard. So I'd like to add some more lights in here and that way I can control it more. And you know, I, they'd be smart lights, so I'd be able to control them and turn them on and off. Obviously they'd be off during the movie, but it would be nice to have it. And it just looks better. It looks more like a cinema. And I wanna put, <clears throat> excuse me, three more lights back there, remove that dome light. Cause I hate, I hate these dome lights. I removed the one up front that was given to me by uh, some company on Amazon to review. So I'm not able to control it through HomeKit, but it's connected through a HomeKit switch so I can turn it on and off. And then I have the remote here. I can change, you know, the colors and stuff like that. So I wanna up update that. Painting, I need to paint the second half of the room. I just haven't done it yet because I absolutely hate painting. And it's just me being lazy, not needing, not wanting to do it. I've even considered maybe hiring someone to, to paint for me just because it's such a pain and I don't have the time for that, but I really don't need to pay someone for it because I can do it. It's just, I don't really want to do it, but I really would like to maybe paint it maybe a little, a little bit lighter color. Obviously I still want it to be like a matte color and dark because it's a theater room, but I would, I don't necessarily need to paint the back half like pitch black again. So I'd probably go with something maybe like a, like a darker grayish. That way it's still a little bit light when I turn on the lights, but it's not gonna be reflecting any light, you know, when the movie's on. And carpet, so this room still has the original carpet. I hate it, I wanna get rid of it. What I should have done, well, I'll, I'll save that for what I do different. But the carpet, I have the flooring, I just need to install it and I'm really considering having someone come and do it because it's gonna be very difficult to do that by myself. I was able to do the spare bedroom and the hallway because there was basically nothing in there. But I have this riser in here now, so I don't even know how I'm gonna move that. I have an idea of how I could do it, but it's still gonna be a little bit tedious. But I wanna get rid of the carpet and I know carpet helps with acoustics. I just don't like this carpet and carpet, to get like carpet that I want, like the carpet that looks like, you know, theater carpet is very, very expensive. And then you have to pay for labor and stuff like that. So I'd rather just rip it all out and then it just extend the flooring that I have out in the hallway and in the guest bedroom. And then I guess the last upgrade is going to be probably one of my biggest. And that's going to be the Epson LS12000B. So Hopefully, if everything goes as planned, I'll be able to upgrade my Epson 5040UB in the first quarter. If not, hopefully, definitely in the second quarter. So I'm hoping that at the end of March, March, April-ish, I'll be able to upgrade to the Epson LS12000B. So I've had that projector, the Epson 5040, since I think 2017 at my parents' house when I first bought it. And it served me well. It's great, but it's, it's outdated. The HDMI on it is outdated. I think it only it's only HDMI 2.0A. And I think it, it only does like up to 18 gigabits per second. So with, with gaming and, you know, 120 FPS gaming and VRR and, you know, HDMI 2.1, it's just outdated. You know, I have an Xbox Series X that's HDMI 2.1 capable. I have the HD Fury 4K Diva that can do some HDMI 2.1 things, even though it's not HDMI 2.1, it'll just be at, you know, a lower bandwidth and the color, I won't get as much color as HDMI 2.1. But I wanna take advantage of HDMI 2.1 and the Epson LS12000B has HDMI 2.1, you know, it won't do four, it won't do 8K and it's still an E-shift, but I've seen it in person and it's absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of you have said, or some of you have said, hey, don't go with the Epson, go with something like a JVC or Sony. And to be honest, I've seen those. I saw the JVCs at Cedia, beautiful. I just don't have that type of money. And the Epson LS12000B is gonna be a lot more affordable. And I like Epson. 
And I know some of you guys might might boo boo on Epson because it's it's not native 4K, but it's better than the E Shift on the Epson, the previous versions. So I've seen, like I said, I've seen it in person. I would absolutely be happy with that. Do what you want that that you know makes you happy. If you think Epson's janky and you want to go with JVC or Sony, by me by all means, you know, do it. But there's a lot of things that the Epson has that I really like. Uh, it's uh, which one thing I don't understand is a lot of projectors nowadays, like JVC and Sony, unless you go like really really high up, they don't have lens shift. You still have to like manually shift the lens. You know, you have the little scroll or the control that you have to manually do. And then they have like the lens cap where you have to take that off. I don't want to have to deal with that every time. That's something that's minor. Like if I had to deal with it, I would. But when you're paying five, six thousand dollars or more for a projector, like, come on. So and I know that's probably a way to cut cost and focus on, you know, video quality. But yeah, the Epson LS12000B, that's going to be my next projector. I was going to go with the 11,000, but I just decided to go ahead and go with the, the 12,000 so I'm really excited about that again hopefully March or April if everything goes well I can upgrade that so my main focus right now is my speakers my my LCR so I have that and once I you know purchased the 1961s I'll be content with that for a while that was my main goal was to to timber match my LCRs with Arndall and then the rest of the speakers I don't really care about upgrading them right now I want to upgrade the LCR and I want to upgrade my projector. And then maybe at some point down the line, I'll upgrade the projector screen, but I don't really think I need to do that right now. You know, it's, it serves me fine. Again, I'm sure some of you people will probably boo boo on silver ticket, but Hey, it's works within my budget and it works fine. So those are some of the upgrades that I have planned for 2023. And then I wanted to talk briefly about what I would do different. So, what I was alluding to before with the carpet is if I had to do it over, I would have taken out all this carpet, installed the flooring before I did the riser, which I should have done, but I didn't really want to wait. Um, I wanted to start getting this room to be functional and it was, but you know, I was getting my theater seats in and I just I, I wanted to have stadium seating to where I could have my friends over. It was doing COVID and you know being at home all the time, I don't I don't mind it. I'm naturally an extrovert, but I can also function completely fine as an introvert. And it just gave me a really nice project to do. It was really fun. I had never done anything like that. That was my first real big DIY project. But if I had to do it over, I would have just ripped off the carpet, installed the floor, waited, and then done the riser because now I mean that thing is huge and it's heavy being having to try to maneuver that to install flooring is going to be a pain so that's why I'm considering maybe just paying someone to come in and do it and let them you know deal with the the manual labor but it is what it is and again I know carpet is better for acoustics but I just hate this carpet and I had I had flooring at my parents' house in my old theater room, theater room, uh, it, but I guess it was a theater room, but I had installed some, some planks in there and it sounded good. I actually think it gave it more of a little bit more lively sound and I, I, I liked it. Of course I had, you know, carpet and stuff and I had furniture in there, but that's probably one of the biggest things that I would do different. I would also just paint everything at the same time instead of painting, you know, one side and then having to wait and do it again. My main focus again was the the front half of the room, which made a huge, huge, huge difference on black levels and just making the picture pop because you don't have that light reflecting off the white walls and then bouncing back onto your screen. So, but I would absolutely just do everything at once, paint everything at once and, you know, be done with it. Something else I would do different is instead of installing in ceiling speakers, I would have just gone with on wall speakers or, you know, hang them from the ceiling because I, you know, and I have a video on my, 
on my channel about that, but you have so much more versatility with an on-wall mounted, you know, bookshelf speaker for, for Atmos. You can aim them properly and everyone gets more or less the same experience as opposed as having a in ceiling speaker that you can only aim, you know, a couple degrees. And I know there's other speakers that are better out there that probably have, you know, that are more aimable. I'm just using some cheap pokes and they serve me well, like they sounded great. If I had to keep them for forever and I never could, you know, use on wall, I'd be happy with it. But now that I have the Atmos speakers up front mounted, I can't, I can't go back. So my plan is to, at some point, you know, mount maybe some 1961 bookshelf speakers and mount those in the back. And then, you know, if I ever get like a, you know, 15 or 17 channel receiver, then I would just use all of the speakers. And unfortunately they won't all be timber match, but hey, you do what you gotta do. Another thing that I would do different is instead of having all acoustic panels, I would have acoustic and diffusers. Now that's something that I can remedy, you know, that's easy fix, just a matter of buying them and saving up for it. But it sounds good in here. Like I've never had an issue of it not sounding good. I am curious to see how it sounds with a mixture of acoustic and diffusion. So I've really I've heard really good things about that. I do want to put some more acoustic treatment on the ceiling. Uh, you know, the second half on the front half of the room, if that makes sense, because it's really just wide open and there's a bunch of flat, you know, it's just a big flat surface. So I need to address that. But I think that that's pretty much everything as far as future updates and what I do different. Honestly, I don't have really have a whole lot of regrets on how my theater turned out because I was basically able to plan it when I, when before this house was being built. This house was built by KB Homes and they have a very, very, very good design center where you can go and basically just customize whatever you want. And so I had them pre-wire everything, which I was super glad because at my parents' house, when I had my home theater, we had to run wiring for all those speakers and having to go up in the attic <clears throat> and drill down through two by fours and then try to fish the wires. I was like, I'm not doing any of that, which I did do some of that here, but that was just four channels that I added extra, but I had them pre-wire everything. And so I was basically able to plan out it's a little bit different when you're, you know, doing a custom home and you're doing a custom home theater. You have a way more control. I didn't have as much control because, you know, these are cookie cutter houses. But at least if I knew I had everything pre-wired, then, you know, I was I could pretty much do everything else myself. Oh, one thing that I did forget that I'm just remembered on future plans. So behind my screen is a double door and there's a closet back there. So originally the front half of this room, the front half of the theater was a bedroom, a spare bedroom. And so I knocked out the wall that was separating this room behind me because the room behind me was actually the media room. So you see how small it is, but there's a closet behind there and I measured it. There's about two feet behind the closet that I want to try and basically just remove that wall and then push everything back because sitting on the front row is not that bad, but it's still very close. So I have my laser here and if I'm looking at the screen, so let me try and see if I can get this. Okay, so that's exactly six feet. So from where I'm sitting at right now from my head to the screen is six feet. That's really close. It's not so bad because it's 4K. So when you're watching 4K content, like I can't typically make out any pixels, even with 1080p, it's kind of hard, but that's still really close. I don't necessarily have to like break my neck, but instead of looking forward, you know, the bottom of the screen is basically where my eye is. So I still do have to look up a little bit. And then if I was to do <clears throat> from my ear to where the speaker is, that's four feet, five inches. So that's really close. Now, before, when I had the pokes up here, when I had the RTIs, the left and rights, and then I had the Polk LSI M center channel, sitting on the front row was 
very uncomfortable because the pokes were just so harsh. So when I had friends over, usually, you know, I let my friends sit in the good seats and I sit on the front row. It's like, it's, it's difficult to sit in the front row and watch a movie because it's just, the, the pokes are just so bright and it's, they're so fatiguing. I haven't sat in the front row yet with the, with the Arn dolls. I'm waiting to break in the 1961s, but sitting in the, in the main listening position, there is no fatiguing whatsoever. And I haven't even run Anthem Arc Genesis on it yet. I'm waiting to break in the speakers before I run Anthem Arc. I'm doing the, something a little bit different this time. But no fatiguing, no ear piercing, no... Uh, they're very neutral speakers, so I'm very excited about that. Because, man, after, you know, sometimes after 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the movie, depending on the mix, it was just so so taxing on my ears and I always had to turn it down and I couldn't listen to it loud enough. And the Arendals are four ohm speakers. They take a lot of power so you can turn them up and they're still clear. They're not going to distort. So awesome. But I think that that's going to do it for the home theater tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I want to emphasize my home theater is not perfect yet. Probably never will be perfect. There's a ton of things that I want to do. There's things that I need to do. And there may be things that I may never even get to do either because of cost or just because the way that it's built. But I do have some plans and I am going to keep you guys updated. I don't know if I'll just keep doing, you know, home theater tours or, you know, yeah, home theater tours, maybe at the end of the year, every year, or when I do something, you know, big that I update. Obviously, you know, when I get my new projector, I'm going to do an unboxing for that and, you know, I'll do reviews, stuff like that. But as far as like the home theater tour, I may just wait till the end of the year because, you know, I'll have that. It's It'll be the end of the year and most of the upgrades that I have planned will hopefully be done. So that's going to conclude it for the home theater tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the, the like button if you did. Share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any future content. See you guys in the next video.